the perception that shipping is outside regulatory reach is one that I think is probably widespread and at least in my view um, very very much um, incorrect. Uh, the regulation of shipping is an international matter. It is done internationally. It is done by a number of different organizations and then various nations bring those regulations into their laws and uh, enforce them thereafter both against ships of their flags and ships visiting their shores. The International Maritime Organization was established by the United Nations in 1948. It has grown and blossomed to a great degree in terms of regulation in the shipping industry. It has 169 country members and a number of other consultants and non-governmental organizations who uh, attend as observers or attend in order to provide information and advice. The International Maritime Organization is the custodian of uh, most of the international conventions. Conventions that relate to ship safety, quality of crews, quality of life of crews, pollution, environment, and similar topics. And there are hundreds of conventions uh, dealt with through IMO and by IMO. It's a great shame that the world, uh, many people in the world, um, unfamiliar with uh, aspects of shipping, have uh, reached conclusions that, that flags of convenience, as they are called, are places of no regulation or places where ships might be hidden in order to avoid regulation. It's not the case. The motivation for going to a small state such as Liberia or Panama for registry is, is not really today based on a, an attempt to avoid regulation because that's just not going to happen. Smaller nations, uh, sometimes nations that, that have registries of vessels, are also members of IMO. For example, Panama um, and Liberia both became members of IMO in the late 50s, late 1950s. And the Bahamas, uh, somewhat later in, in uh, 1978, I believe. Uh, so that I would say that any country that has any involvement in shipping, either as a flag state, as a, a coastal state, or as a, um, a state where ships trade, would be a member of IMO. Port State Control has been a very effective um, program uh, designed uh, to do exactly what the words suggest, that is, control of ships at the port state as opposed to the flag state. That means that when a ship calls, let's use Canada for example, when a ship calls in Canada, it is subject to inspection by Canadian Ministry of Transport, Transport Canada inspectors, uh, who go on board and look to ensure that the ship is complying with the international conventions. Uh, they look to make sure that the ship is physically safe, uh, physically conducive to the, the people that live on board, uh, that she is fit for the carriage of cargo, that she is fit to trade in the international environment without causing pollution. There's a long, long list of matters that will be looked at by a port state control inspector. And if he's not satisfied that the ship complies um, as required by the, by the international or the national laws, he can detain the ship and make sure that the necessary work is done to bring her back into proper order. When a ship is trading internationally, it will call in countries that will enforce regulation that will require the ship to maintain standards. Classification societies are organizations that develop and enforce rules with respect to the construction and maintenance of, of vessels. They are independent um, of any particular government or any particular uh, government organization. The, the classification society will look at the plans for the vessel and will approve them. It will then have people, inspectors, on site at the construction yard. 
and they will look at the quality of the welding, they'll look at the quality of the steel, they'll look at the quality of the engines and the boilers and all of the equipment that goes into the vessel. And each step along the way must be approved by the Classification Society inspector. The shipping regime is such today that IMO, the classification societies, uh, the banks, and port state control are all designed to ensure the quality of the ship, the quality of the crew, uh, the safety environmentally and operationally of, of the vessel at all times. Promulgating laws is relatively easy because most nations are concerned about um, ship structure, ship crewing, and the safety of the environment and, and the world's oceans. Since 911, particularly, there's so many extra regulations in place. Like most people don't realize that every ship that sails for Canada, every single shipment on that vessel has been declared to Canada Customs 48 hours before it leaves so they can be checking into things. Again, they're doing massive inspections of the port of entry, looking for contrabands and that kind of thing. So they call that thickening the border. The Port of Prince Rupert has taken a holistic, collaborative approach to port security. And I think um, with the, the terminal itself here, the container terminal, one of the advantages of uh, building a new container terminal is that you can design the state-of-the-art security into the terminal. You know, when you start with the blank slate, you can put the security in that you want for the terminal and that includes the uh, radiation portals. So those radiation portals are strategically situated on the terminal, and every can that comes off the ship goes through those radiation portals. The information that they get from the, when they do the scanning goes back to Ottawa, where that is screened, assessed, and if there's a, a trigger or a concern, then that can can be pulled inside, inspected, opened up. But that's just one piece of the security that we have here.